Hey guys, so here is Devil's Advocate episode seven. Okay, please check out um, please check out our uh, uh, our other episodes. Right, they're they are quite good. Um, today uh, we're gonna see uh, we're gonna start with one topic first, um, and see how it goes. Um, there was recently a clip with uh, Gabrielle Union, right, talking about. 50-50 relationships and, you know, other types of relationships too. And I was also thinking about it too where I was talking to a family member and I'm saying like women are so fickle, right? Women, they do not know what they want. I don't even think women know what they don't want really because let's say this. Women, I've said it too, right? You could have a 50-50 relationship and women will say they don't want that. Uh, you could have a relationship where a man stays home, a woman goes to work. They don't want that. Uh, a relationship where a man goes to work and a woman stays home, and they don't want that too. The problem is that you don't, I mean, women don't even know what they really want. And then when they're in it, they're not even sure if they want that. So it's like, it's such a, especially with modern women, with being so free, with having yeah your own you can have your own career, all this stuff where, and all men with the internet, it's widespread where you can, um, you know, always have access to so a, a wide range of men that I believe it's poisoning women's mind where again, option is actually having so many options is actually a detriment where you don't even know what you want. And then, you know, women go through the, the hassle of like trying different relationships and then at the end, there are there are forty, they're fifty, and now they may know what they want. But then at that age, what other man is going to deal with you when you've been through so much, right? And that's why I, that's where I say it again: the delusion of women. But um, it, we'll we'll talk more into that. But we'll go into the first uh, the clip of what Gabriel Union was saying. Uh, what are your thoughts? Well, but let's. What, what are your thoughts on like, you know, what I said just now a little bit? So, everyone goes through stuff as they age in life, and I don't think it's fair to say that the human experience lessens a person's worth. That's that's rough to me. Um, so, <laughs> well, 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 hold that thought there. To experiment and and try out things before we figure out what it is we want and where we want to be in life and so i don't know like okay I, I, well then we'll, we'll, di we'll dive in a little bit more into that thought okay uh, let's uh um, talk about let's show the the clip this is the the thing that went viral you know online a little while you know like a day or two ago mm-hmm not using my anxiety and scarcity mindset to be my engine, which is hard. It's weird to say I'm head of household because in this household, we split everything 50-50. But in the other households that each of us have to support, it puts this, there's always this like gorilla on your back that it is like, you better work, you better work, you better work. You know, you're gonna sleep in? Mm -hmm. You know, somebody might not eat. Well, well, you gotta vote. And it's hard. It's hard to let that go. So I'm working on that. That clip surprised the internet, especially with women, where she's thinking about, wow, she's actually going 50 50 in her relationship. But you have to, I think most people didn't know. I don't know if you know, right? Do you know about her past relationship? I don't know much about her past relationship. So. She actually admitted to cheating in her last marriage, right? Mm -hmm. But her perception was because she was pretty much the breadwinner, what she was saying, she was the head of the house. So in her mind, she felt that being the head of the house gave her the opportunity to do what she pretty much wants because she's the boss. And that's the thing where it's – or I was saying, right, Life experiences can damage you. Where now it's like, this is her way of thinking. So now it's affecting her 
you know, her next relationship where now she has to like because now she feels like it has to be 50 50. So I so I won't, you know, I don't know. Um I guess fault her, right? Because if it's not 50 50, then I feel like I, I I'm the boss, so I can do what I want. And she pretty much said that in her last relationship, about her last relationship, where yeah, she felt like she was the the man in the relationship. She felt like she was she had she had the right to do whatever she see fit because again she was the provider in that relationship. You know. A uh, question before I offer any offer any thoughts. Um, if you're the provider in the relationship, do you think that's the case? Let me say this right. Um, I I'm not really for cheating, so that's not what I'm talking oh, of about. I, yeah, agree. I I would say that. With modern day society, we put so little emph emph emphasis uh, or importance on being the provider. We People don't understand that. I do believe that when you're the provider, you are the head of the household. So I believe in not dictatorship, but I do believe in leadership where you what your how the family goes is up to you. You can listen to you know your wife or other people's uh, opinions, but the end um, direction or the end results, that is your up to you. If you are the head of the household, if you are the main provider. So I believe that is what I, I do believe that's the case because I don't know about you, but working is shitty. It's not I've seen where I people agree. like, yeah, people working is hard, dealing with people, the grind. People make such a big emphasis where, oh, staying home and taking care of the kids. Well, first of all, you know, you live in that home too. And kids are also yours. So that's not necessarily like you're doing it for someone else. You're, you're doing it because it's part of your life, you know. So I don't necessarily think that, you know, people are take, trying to weaken the power of being the provider of a relationship. It's very important. It's what pretty much keeps a relationship afloat. If you're not providing, you don't, you're not getting bills, you're not getting any any kind of luxury. So I do believe that being the provider, you have the final say and you have the power and direction of the of the relationship. So I don't know. What would you think? Well, I would ask a follow-up question to that. Okay. Things happen in life. You get laid off or you get injured and you can't find another job. And your mate can and does and takes over the providing. Is she now the head of the household? Well, I can say this. <clears throat> One thing, I do believe men, how we're wired, we have to provide. I, I think that's I think that's nature uh, biology biology in the, in essence, right? Even you could name it back in the day or even the caveman day, men are the ones to hunt. So they're providing. It's I think I think it's built in our DNA to we have to be productive. Men have to be productive. So if something so, happens where you can't well, I'm yeah, I get it. Where you can't. So that's the thing where at the end of the day, right? If you are contributing the most to the family, I I do agree that if the roles reverse, then fine, that's reverse. Uh, if he takes up the, you know, the, um, you know, the other duties of the household where she does it, but I can tell you this, where I see that as it's a terrible thing for him because I see that not leading in a in a majority, not leading in a good way for men, because then, like I said, with that, it's a it's within our biology, you know, within our nature. Women, type type of women will see you as less. And you think about this with divorce rates, with women initiating divorces by 80% plus, I think that type of relationship is highly likely bound to fail. Women are so wired to see a man to be above her that stuff like that will likely fail. That's interesting. Okay. All right. So, surprise, I disagree. <laughs> yeah, 
But I, I think that's because in, in I think the clip we're going to look at next or later will go into that a little bit. So I don't want to jump too far into it, but I will say that I don't think that I don't think that being the provider necessarily makes you the head or being the number one breadwinner makes you the head. Um, I think, I think that's something that needs to be discussed when you're, when you're agreeing to marry someone, but because I'm, I am religious and, and old school, I do think the man is the head of the household, but a good but head. How of can you, then how can you say, for, so you, I mean, how could your view thinking being the provider, the main provider mm -hmm. does not mean being the head of the household. So, because then, okay, do you, that mean, do you think that if a woman, I mean, I, that doesn't make sense with you. I, I can't do So you, if you think a woman's providing, she's still not the head of the household. So, so from, from my, from my background as, so a, a woman providing for a, for her, for her children. Yeah. She, a woman can definitely be the head of, head of a household. Um, a married couple can decide that the woman is going to be the one to make the decision. But I think the head of the household, whether they provide or not, is the one who makes the final decisions, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and just because I'm I'm religious, classically and biblically, that's the man. And but 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 don't you think that that's like that's uh, because usually that yeah that's the man, but it's because usually the man is the one who's providing. No, it's because really? it's because if we're talking if we're if we're, we're speaking religiously, right? Uh -huh. It's because the Bible says so. Yeah, but I mean, <laughs> that's God's arrangement, and and that makes it his main the the man's responsibility to be the provider if he can. But what it really means is that the man is the decision maker, like you explained, like like yeah. a head of household makes final decisions. Yeah, they're responsible for doing what's best for that household. So even in the family I was raised in, right? My, there were times, not often, because my father was the primary provider, but there were times when he was down and wasn't able to provide. And my mother stepped up and put in the work, but the money she brought home, she, he made the decisions about what to do with primarily. You see what I'm saying? But see, I no, okay. I, I kind of think that maybe you are not getting what I'm saying. That okay. See the I think the issue is that with marriage, the marriage, the vow of marriage, right? Through mm -hmm. rich, you know, through rich and poor and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So that's the thing where I'm I am i am saying that if the roles is permanently, permanently reversed, where she's now purely providing for the rest of if this family works out, right? If this mm -hmm. imaginary family works out, she's providing for the lifelong of this family mm -hmm. while he's now pretty much the housewife in a sense, right? Or the house husband, as they're calling it now. So that's what I'm talking about. Then that's different where, yeah, I do believe a woman should, um, you know, be with a man through thick and thin, you know? If okay. he's down and out, well, of course, she should be the one helping the family and pushing him up and stuff like that. But that's also the process where a man is trying to still build himself back up. If he lost a job, build himself back up to becoming what he was before or better. So th that's the thing, that's the ca caveat where I think it may be more in line with what you're saying that, yeah, your mom is uh, providing, but she's, your, the the father's, your father is still the head of the household. Mm -hmm. But that is a dynamic. It's not like, it's not a permanent dynamic. But so both parties know that. But you're saying the, the primary provider or the money maker is automatically the head of household. And uh, because it's definitely I, the woman, that means the woman is the head of the household. I just think that it's the one who's, let's say this, I'm saying the one who's keeping the family afloat, right? So okay. in general, that would be the provider. If you are, you know, if you are keeping the family in this house, right, then you have that, like you're paying the mortgage, you're paying all these bills, right? You're buying the luxuries, you're, you're providing for the family. I believe, yes, you have to. I mean, it's naturally where you have the say on what goes on because it's really your money that you're putting into the family. So money is the only thing that dictates uh, provision or, or, or keeping a family afloat. 
Let's say, let's money say is the main. Thing. I mean, come on, let's not let's not be philosophical. Money is the main thing. Ah, uh, no. Without money, you can't do anything else. I mean, okay. you can make. I mean, like, let's say without other stuff, yeah, you, you could compensate with other things. But without money, what your about, families live in the streets. So, so no. families. Well, in America, okay, there are plenty of places where families live in the streets anyway. Yeah, um, but that's not that's not like a good thing. And no, that's, well, a, that's not. But I'm saying that throughout. I'm. I'm. What I'm saying. What I'm saying is that I don't think that. That your financials dictates the structure of the relationship. No, I think maybe you're saying different. That's, that's, that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to say. Or no, that's I, because I I think it's wrong. Where maybe you're thinking about a, a large amount of financial. I don't know. I don't think like that. I mean, I think purely where if you are providing the bulk amount, like you're paying the bills, you're paying the mortgage or whatever. It doesn't matter. You have you don't have to pay. You don't have to be like a rich man, but it's like. You are keeping the family afloat. Float. I think that that comes with the responsibility, and okay. the responsibility comes with power. Hmm. Okay. So you're saying if you if you've taken on that responsibility, then you should get the power. Yeah. It it comes. I think it comes with it. And I think see, you're. you're I believe right where I'm listening to you is that mm -hmm. I think you're trying to disconnect it, where it's naturally because. You're right. I'm not saying that that's not usually how it works. And yeah, that's, that's so, not what most people decide. But what I am saying is that that doesn't. I don't think that necessarily dictates who should be head of the household. Why doesn't? Okay, tell me why doesn't it? Because in multiple situations, I think there's a lot more to being a head of household than just making money, right? If you if 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 you make you make all the money, right, in your relationship, but you're Let's say you're bad with money or let's say um, you're not emotional for whatever reason. You're someone who's not able to handle a lot at once emotionally. Right. So maybe you get frazzled when it's time to make decisions. Uh, you don't know how to grocery shop. I, this is just hypothetical. Right. Um, you, you, you bring home the money, but you don't understand how to how to divvy it up to pay bills. Uh, you bring home the money, but you don't know how to make good decisions about what your children wear or, or eat or where they go to school. Um, I mean, are those things part of being a head of household? Well, yeah, I think they're, they're bad leaders. I mean, come on. Well, okay. But, but, and, and I, I, I don't disagree with you, but leadership is, is more than just making the most money is what I'm saying. I, I mean, I still don't see the disconnect from it because let's say this, right? If, in my I mean, if I'm making the most money, so I'm deciding where that money goes. Mm -hmm. So that, that has to be my decision. I mean, well, that, that's my final decision, right? I, of course you, if you're part if you have a partner, if you have a wife, she, she has a voice. It doesn't mean, but course, it's your yeah. final decision. Right. So I decide where this money goes, right? It could go to a school, what's cool. It could go to a trip, what trip. It could go to, you know, what house we could buy, What if we're going to buy more houses, uh, things like that. That, I mean, although if I'm a bad leader, then I'm a bad leader. But, I mean, again, I, I'm still the lead because I'm providing all this stuff. Where, let's say this, if it was reverse and the woman is – um making all the money, right? You're making all the money. And then the man who's just a stay-at-home husband trying to now tell her what she should do with her money, I personally believe that will be a recipe for a divorce. That's what I personally believe. Because I got like, you got to think, right? Because you could be right. What you're saying could be right. It says it doesn't have to be, but really it is. That's... I'll say more because the things where you're being more fanciful, right? I mean, it could, it, it may, it doesn't have to be, but reality, it is. Real, 100% reality, it is. Because you, like I said, well, I'm going to finish it where if a woman was making the bulk of the money or she was making all the money and her husband is just staying home, cleaning the house, um, you know, watching the kids, and he's telling her, 
how she, how the money should be spent, and she's just voicing her opinion, right? Like, okay, babe, okay, if that's what you say, okay. While she's going to work every day, I I a hundred percent say she would divorce him to find a man that will she can, uh, you uh, you know, not be like that. Where it's not like that. Where she doesn't feel like she's do because, like I said, going to work is very. I believe it's more mentally and physically draining than just being a, a house husband, a housewife, shit like that. Personal opinion. I believe that it's more mentally taxing and physically taxing. So if, she, if let's say a woman is do, going, you know, being, uh, um, going to work and taxing herself and coming back and some, then her husband is now directing her, leading her to how, she should spend her money, you know. I personally believe that a woman like that would divorce him. Hmm. Okay, okay. I mean, you know, we should just get to the next clip. I have more to say about that, but okay, okay. But 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 let's and and about and about Gabrielle. I have some thoughts on that too. But I will right, we'll finish this. So we'll we'll this clip is uh from his uh other podcast that he comes on um sometimes uh head nerds in charge yeah yeah so um so we were we were discussing the gabrielle union clip and this is uh one of the co-hosts of the show uh taffy wonder um giving her thoughts she gets a little spicy but it's worth a listen all right let's check it out just as you provide they just think they the head because they got money well bitches nowadays even this back in my mother day had money that didn't make me mm -hmm. the fucking head of the household. She said that they pay half and half, but who's doing the emotional and mental fucking labor in the house to actually make sure that it's fucking running? Yeah, you nothing. paying, you putting money in the bank account, but did you actually make sure the fucking light bill got paid? Mm. Okay, yeah. uh, it's called partner. You know, I mean, like what, what credit card statements are? My fucking. Uh, see, this is this is what great. <laughs> Great. This is what modern delusion women are like, right? You guys say then okay. You see, people forget that partnership in a marriage doesn't necessarily mean 50-50. Where okay, yeah, he made the money. Well, what are you doing? Just watching him then? You're just watching him. He should be he should make the money and now pay and like physically go to the paying the bills. You know, going to the um, website and paying these bills. No, this is where you actually contribute, you know, where, okay, he makes the money. A woman will go online and pay those bills with the money that he made. That doesn't, that doesn't make you all that special. I, I say this, <laughs> emotional, that, that's ridiculous. So you, your family is not going to eat on emotion, right? <laughs> They're not going to satisfy their hunger from emotion. Ridiculous. This is why I said that if a man does not make much money, they will chastise them. But if they're making the money, now they're saying, oh, you're not being all these, like all these other uh, feminine ideal ideologies that need to be um, felt too. And now I see why you're saying what you said. Because you're, you're catering to women. Oh no, no, I've had this opinion already, and I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll talk more after you. But you go ahead. You go ahead. I, I like this. Nah. <laughs> you said I'm not, I don't want to use no real. Listen, no, no, no. But for real, uh, I turned to put my son's dad down. But when we were together, the nigga didn't know where his fucking birth certificate was. I had to tell him when he went on job. Uh, fucking wait, 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 shit. Happy. Oh, yeah, wait, wait, real quick, not to end that. Not to end your flow. Dead ass, mama ain't dead ass, I used to get. I used to hand over the bag and be like, I don't know how to pay the bill. That that, that was always my my then wife's uh responsibility. You, I'll be your bread, but you. So you're not wrong. You're not wrong. Listen, I'm some social security cards. Uh, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Y'all don't fucking know. Don't, wouldn't even know how to request a fucking copy of your birth certificate. Your bitch has to fucking do everything for you. They have to teach you how to do everything. And so before y'all talk about running households, just because y'all niggas surviving on your own, don't make you the head of any fucking thing or that you could run anything. That's ridiculous. Okay. I mean, right. Come on. I like, Wait, you talk before I talk. I want to. Yeah. Hear you. Okay. You tell me this, right? Uh, it's your friend. Is it's your friend. Yeah, but no, it's, it's no one's fault 
for her picking a terrible leader. It's just her fault. <laughs> and second, who I mean, like, if he okay, let's say this. What she said, like, he doesn't know her pa or his passport or whatever, his birth certificate. Okay, great. She knows where it is. You make it seem like if a man is the leader of the household, it's hundred percent everything him. That's the thing where I, I, I fought women where they say that, okay, what they contribute means that he's not the leader of the household. No, it's that you're contributing part to something that you are in. You are in a relationship. A relationship is not just one person. So, and being a leader, see, it's like, uh, I saw this, um, is there still more to this clip? Um, I don't think so. I don't think you have to go any further. Okay. So I remember what's, what's next, but I think so we got to think, right? Mm -hmm. I, I like this analogy where a president and a vice president, mm -hmm. they, they still put, they still put in effort. A vice president still is not like, I don't know, a nobody, but at the end of the day, it's the president that does the final decision, but vice president, he does things too, you know? So it's not like, it's not like you're the president or it's not like you're the king and then there's no one else with you. Right, There's, you have no one else to like. Um, I don't know uh, what is it called uh, ha that says anything, right? So your your um your rule is un, you know, it's hundred percent you. So if it fails, it's hundred percent your fault. Mm -hmm. It's a relationship where that's why I said that people think that it's different with how modern how it should be. Mod I I've said it before, right? Where we should take traditions, right, and actually just modernize it in a bit, right. Put it in a more of a modernized lens where, yeah, a man is the leader of the household. He provides, but he doesn't have to be like, you know, um, it, it doesn't have to tell you when to bark and you will bark. That's not the same thing, right? It's that I'm telling you, I've been in a relationship where if I say, uh, let's go right, and she lets say, go, let's go left, what are we doing? We're fighting, right? I'm arguing. She's arguing. That's the thing. There's a difference where it's a leader where there no company can have two bosses, right? A company has one always one boss. Mm -hmm. We have other CEOs to give. Like so, if I'm saying let's go right, and she said, "Babe, I think we should go left." And as the leader of the household, I'm saying, "You know what? I see what you're saying, but I still say we go left. Go uh, left." And as a dutiful wife, she said, "Okay, we'll do it." Right. I'll trust you because this is her, the problem with modern women. They pick terrible men. And that's why I said before, they're jaded. Getting older, getting more trauma. This is now you're jaded about it. This is the, and great. I'm thankful for you. Now, you, now you're seeing a real live woman, right? Modern woman, average woman, seeing her take. This is what the what um, trauma and life does to you. It jades you where I'm sorry you picked just a terrible man, a man that you did not see that was um, that can that you can be with for a long term, a man that you could not see with being married to. It's it's shitty, but that's the thing where women just pick terrible men. And that's what happens. So and, and our, first of all, men pick terrible women, too, a lot of the times. And that's how we end up talking about. What's, what's wrong with women and all the things they do wrong because we pick the women who do wrong things. But I've, I, don't, I don't think you understood her point completely. Okay. I don't think her point was if you don't know how to do all this stuff, you can't be the head of a household. I think her point was, and I agree with it, that the head of being the head of a household requires more than just making the most money. That's all I'm saying. Even if, if, if you are the man and you make the most, let's reverse it. Let's say your girl makes the money, right? But you make the best decisions. So when you guys go into your relationship, she trusts you to make good decisions and she's going to follow your lead, right? That's a good woman. She's she's also the primary money maker, but does that mean you can't be the head? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like like I when 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 you if you have a family with children, right? 
the decisions you make, you're going to have to make the head of the household is going to have to make decisions that don't even involve money. Like what to teach your children morally. Are you guys going to be religious and all of you follow the same thing? What are your thoughts on, on sex before marriage or how soon do you want, are they going to be able to start dating? What schools are they going to go to? Um, what kind of material do they read or listen to? What kind of video games do they do they play? How are you going to influence their life? Those are decisions that money doesn't solve. You can't just say, hey, I have the most money, so here's what we're going to do. You have to make a decision in their best interest. So headship involves more than just making the most money. Let me say this, right? Mm -hmm. What money brings is power. It always has always been power. Okay. It's always been the symbol of power. So I personally believe now I must, again, we're not talking about exceptions, but there are exceptions where, okay, yeah, a woman's making more money and then she listens to her husband. Okay. That could be an exception, but I'm telling you mm -hmm. reality. If a woman is making the bulk of the money or all of the money, mm -hmm. and then she's coming to her husband for leadership, that is a recipe for divorce. And let's go to your example where, yeah, he makes great decisions. I will say this, unless, unless your relationship, when let's say, let's give an example where she uh, met him um, in in high school and they've been together and he's always made, been a good leader, right? He chose to be a, a poor artist, shit like that. And while she chose to be a lawyer, okay. And she still trusts the decision. Okay, if that's established... And you built together, and that's happens. Oh, that could happen, maybe. But then I'm telling you this: where if you are a good leader, making great decisions, and you're the one who's not making the money, can I trust you actually making good decisions? When your life is, let's say, if you were divorced, you would have nothing. So really, it's, I personally believe that for a person to make good life decisions, he should be actually financially stable and had shown good financial decisions. So technically I, I but believe talk about how financially mean. stable doesn't mean rich or well off sometimes. Right. So, wow. but we, but we've talked before about how financially stable doesn't mean rich or well off. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not saying rich or well off. Class, right. Huh? So I, I make, I make enough to take care of myself. Yeah. Pay rent, pay for a car, and pay my bills, and some cable too. Like I'm, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm doing all right. <laughs> if, if, if I, if I meet a woman who makes more than me, that doesn't mean I'm not financially stable. Yeah, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, okay. that's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying like, if you met a woman that's made more than you, the likelihood of her looking for you for leadership. Is very low. Okay. Well, okay. All right. And see, and that and that's where I say sometimes men pick the wrong women too. No, but see that's why do, I, I, see, do why? I say that's the wrong women? Because like let's say the example where she's you know everything perfect, morally correct, all you know, every there's not nothing, nothing you can say that's wrong with her. But it's like at the end of the day, it's like we forget that women want men that are either equal to them. Or better than them. Women that look for men that are below them, at least in financial uh, status, is rare. Right? It's rare and it don't last. It just don't doesn't last. If it happens, like I said, it could happen. But if it happens, it won't last. I think that if you want a woman who's going to follow your lead and you pick someone who won't follow your lead, You've picked the wrong woman, but you can. I'm, but you about. I'm, but, it's, but you got to think of it this right. If you want a woman to follow your lead, you have to have a reason where she looks like. Because this is the thing. I don't necessarily say that it's. I mean, yes, men can pick wrong women, but if men like, like, listen to this, right? If I come to you and give you financial advice, I'm giving you financial advice, right? Mm -hmm. But you make a million dollars and I make fifty k. Would you even accept my financial advice? <laughs> See, like, like that. Why would you? Why would it be logically 
that you, as a millionaire, accepting a financial advice from someone who who's like minimum wage, right? Or you know the minimum income. Why would you accept that? So a woman sees this. Your, as, but I might take your advice on uh on numerous other things. I mean, you could, but I mean, necessarily, but you won't you won't follow my leadership, would you? Perhaps. What are you? What are Perhaps, you no, don't lie to yourself. So let me let me let me put this another way. Again, let's just talk about my religious background, right? A man is the head of the household. There was no addendum that says as long as he makes the most money. No, but see, that's 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 to, to provide. It does say that. But it talks about how a man as the head of the house should be the head of the household as Christ is the head of the congregation. So it meant that the most important thing a man needed to do was love his wife and take care of her spiritually and emotionally as well. Those are things that we struggle with because men have no problem bringing home the bacon. Then you get home and we want to sit on the couch and tell everybody what to do. But sometimes there's more required, right? So for a man to be head of the household, to really take care of his wife, he has to be available. You, you may spend all day at work and you come home and she wants to talk about some things. You got to have to talk because if you're not willing to sit and talk and listen to her, that's going to be a, a reason why a relationship ends. Right. If if you're not in tune with what's going on with her or your children. Right. That's going to be a reason why the relationship ends, too. And you made the most money the whole time, but you weren't you weren't good to your family. So there's more involved in headship. And the Bible talks about a woman being submissive to a man. It doesn't say as long as he makes more money. It just says that's the structure. That's the biblical structure for a family. And then it tells a wife that she should respect her husband. So if a Christian man were looking for a good wife, financials come, may come into it later because you have to think practically, but the, the top criteria is that she's, she's, she listens, she's submissive, She's willing to follow her man's lead and respect him and take care of home. And he has to be the kind of head that deserves that kind of respect um, by following Christ's example. Jesus Christ was not a moneymaker. He was not rich or well. Okay, let me, let me. I'm just saying this. It's, it may be part of the criteria. If you go into a relationship and you guys discuss that and you decide that's how it should be, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I'm just saying that I don't think it's the thing that dictates who's the who's the head of the household. Okay, let me let me put a little bit of logic in your okay. mystical religion, right? Okay. <laughs> you have to think about this. Mm -hmm. There's context. Mm -hmm. So let's say the Bible, even the time of the Bible is re re reflected in the Bible. Men were purely the provider. No such thing as a woman that even provides a little bit. Financially or otherwise, right? There's no such thing. Definitely not during the context of the Bible. So that, so I believe that there's no need for an asterisk because people don't realize that. Oh, there could be. They would think 100. A man will provide. A man will bring home the bacon. 100. percent And a woman will be the housewife. 100. percent There is no fathom of it being different. So there ha there's context to the Bible in that sense where that's what you got to think. And there, th that's why there's no asterisk, oh, maybe, oh, it has to bring home the bacon, or maybe not. It's because it is uh, already inferred that well, what he about will be. What about requirements for a head? Because let, let's say that you said Jesus Christ, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not religious, but at the end of the day, if he was, let's say, a homeless man, had no abilities whatsoever, no one would follow him. He had the powers still. And I believe that's symbolic in the instance, instance that people follow him because he had power. And I believe symbolically, power is what represents head of the household. And in modern day, what really represents power is money. I'm not saying it's the end all the be all, but I'm saying that's what will um, signify you as, you know, it's like, again, it's a symbol. Why you're, you're the head of the household is because you have the power to provide. 
I mean, and Jesus, you, Jesus had right. Jesus displayed power, but he gained followers when he talked about how we should live. So, but yeah, yeah but guess it, right? Like I said, you no, know, it's but see, but see, that's the thing where you're saying, right? Money is the power, while the leadership, the things how you, how, you know, how the person is, the morals, the characters, whatever is the what you said, what Jesus is doing. But you have to back it up, right? No woman is just going to listen to. Um, uh, I that's why it's you see it in society where if a woman is the millionaire and the man is the bum who makes no money and stays at home, it is rare that she will follow his lead because he has no representation of power. Period. And I believe well, in, so, in, so, so, so. I'm using I'm using Jesus as, as, as a symbolic symbol where he had the power to back up his word where his followers listen and then actually pay attention to things he said and follow his leadership. But the power is there. So they trust it and believed it. I think they respected but, him because he lived by what he taught. But but they follow him because they see that he is someone, well, I don't want to sound bad, but like magical. And like, it, it, because I 100%, I personally believe if he showed he was just a regular person, no, nothing special about him. And he just showed morals and characters. I do not believe uh, it will it will become a religion. It will become maybe like a following, but a religion that spreads out. You mm -hmm. you hear in the books where they describe the feats feats of Jesus, yeah, right? Yeah. Because it's yeah, it's um, it backs up the thing where he is I don't know, almighty. I believe someone who's not almighty and just a regular person spewing out. You know, morally sound, I don't know, advice or morally sound talk, talking points does not uh, a following will make. Well, I mean, if, if, if we were not to, I don't want to make this a whole biblical discussion. Yeah, yeah. But if we were just talking, if we were just talking a Bible, Apostle John wrote like 13 books of the Bible. Um, he was an incredible teacher. He was just a man. He wasn't someone who performed miracles or did a or, or did a lot of those things. But he led congregations because he was able to teach. He learned that from Christ. Uh, there are a number of scriptures where they talk about they were in awe of his teaching. And the only reason I bring that up is because I think that I think that it is very possible in a marriage to be fit to lead, even if you don't make all the money. Now, if you want to talk about exceptions, it is an exception to have a millionaire and a middle class or lower class person be in a relationship at all. I don't think they even see each other. But most of us in the middle class, the difference in what we make is negligible, right? Well, I'm, I'm saying, okay, but okay, let's do a middle class where, okay, I'm making 50K and my wife makes nothing. Yeah, I'm. I still have. It's still because, like, what you said, right? I think mm -hmm. you said John. It's still an example of yeah. There, even to this day, you can name. I can name so many people where, you know, Hemingway. Uh, there's, there's, I. It's, it's celebrityism. It's people, and there's preachers who who don't have power yet they have a following, but it's still without the symbolic symbol of someone who is powerful. You're not going to gain the religion. So I'm using it more. I'm not talking about, because I'm not, you know, a Bible. Yeah, yeah, I got you, I'm I got more you. talking about it's a symbol. Okay. Money is just a symbol of power. Okay. I believe women look for men for power, for, you know, uh, and that's what I think masculinity represents. But I think, yeah. I think that because this is a more realistic example, right? A woman that makes 70,000 and a man that makes 45,000 get together yeah. right that's a that's a good size gap but they're both still middle class people right yeah maybe the woman is the head of the household because she brings home the bacon and she's a decision maker or maybe the man is the head of the household because she trusts him to lead no matter how much money she makes but i i will tell you the difference is that it's in the statistics I believe your example is rare. Okay. That's a that's a problem where it's a it, I 
as much as you want to be more fanciful, you know, really nice and picturesque, mm -hmm. women just don't do that. Women will not look to you for leadership when you have, when you show no power, when you show no example where, you know what, I can see this man as a leader. I don't believe it. Maybe the difference is that if they um, built that life together, that may happen. Like I said, there are exceptions where, again, if they will came into high school together, maybe that can happen. But the problem is that 80% of marriages are followed by women. One, The two big biggest reasons, right, are finances mm -hmm. and infidelity. And I say infidelity, women cheat about the same rate as men. And I think women cheat more because they hide it better. But that's my own antidote. But again, women cheat more than men or women cheat about the same rate as men. So finances is a big thing. I mean, marriage wouldn't break up with only just um, if marriages practically 80, most like, let's say if 70% of marriages broke up just because of uh, infidelity, then okay, I may say, I may agree with you, right? But one of the biggest reasons for divorces is finance. So if you think that because, oh, a woman's making more, men's looking less, and woman's fine with that, well, the statistics, real reality of people do not show that. Okay. All so, right. you know, and that's why I think that, like, we are helping, right, facilitate stuff like this, where we're giving people excuses, in my in my thinking. We're, making, we're, we're giving people excuses where... You choose the man, and I want to bring him back to your friend in a bit. I'm and not to be mean to degrade her, but this is a problem where we're not teaching people. I think the or our children, the like I I, I, I still believe that it's traditional, but with a taste with a hint of modernization, where she, her parents. Seemed to be pretty much a representation of her. Her probably, I don't know her background, but it would have been better if her she had it where she, you picked the right type of man. Where now you don't have to complain about you know your baby daddy, right? Now you're talking about my husband instead. You know my husband's great this and that. Where he's a good leader. Where you know he he provides and all this stuff. Where this is the problem where. We the like I think the we will go back to is the problem is that you don't pick good leaders. You don't pick men with maybe leadership qualities. Because I was just talking to a woman today. She's been with and she's twenty five. Been with a man for twenty. Uh, twenty. Uh, I mean no, eight years, and he uh he pretty much brings more of the money, right? But she can't respect him. Because all he does is just pay bills. So I, that's one thing where you also have to think. It's, it's also more than just paying bills. I do agree with that. But it's because you pick the wrong type of men. So that's why I said where you were saying before that, like, you know, <clears throat> the age and, like, life experience does not make – it does. Because we have a problem where women are not evaluating men better. Because – Again, I say the thing where I don't, I don't necessarily uh, chastise men for picking wrong women because I believe men should receive trauma so they can learn to do better. But I say women, I put the, I put the onus in women because at the end of the day, they produce children. The problem with her is that she, she has a child now with a man that she deemed unworthy. That's the problem. Well, all right, so hold on a sec, because I'm gonna say hold on because the point she was making, she wasn't she wasn't complaining about the man. She was just making a point that there's more to headship than just money. But you gotta think that's an example so, of so, yeah, but so so even if she used him as an example, she didn't say, Yeah, he was no good because he didn't bring home enough money. She said he was no good. For, if she, she didn't even say he was no good, but she said he had other failings. 
that that made him a poor. So I think that a woman wants a leader in different aspects of life, not just money, right? If we narrow it down to just money, maybe maybe uh, there will be there will definitely be situations where the woman isn't happy with the man because he doesn't bring home enough. But I wonder how many of those divorces regarding finances had just as much or more to do with mishandling of money, right? Because I don't think that a woman comes home to a responsible man, a good woman comes home to a responsible man and leaves him because he doesn't make enough. I think she leaves him because she doesn't trust him to make smart decisions. I think she loses respect for him because he may mishandle their funds. Now, I'm not saying there aren't situations where a woman just doesn't respect a man who doesn't make as much money as her. They shouldn't have gotten to that relationship. He picked the wrong man and he picked the wrong woman. But in a situation where, where I may make more money, but if I don't know what to do with it, if I make bad decisions about it, if I buy a PS5 when we need to put food in the fridge, you know what I mean? Or I don't, or, or, or you know, furniture or toys when I should be taking care of the car note and, and, and the rent's late. Now that's, that could lead to an end of a relationship regarding finance. And I made more money the whole time, but I made bad decisions with it. I'm just, that's all I'm saying. That See, but, see now I, I think that you are confused. I mean, you, I mean, like, I think you're confusing it where I don't say that money is what makes a leader. I say money is what the symbol, right? It's a symbol. Okay. There's more to a leader than just money, but there, but to be a leader, you have to show of power. So money is the show of power. Now comes the time. Now comes the point where, why would you be the leader? Because do you have the responsibility? Do you have the other qualities? Leadership is not, not every man can become a president because it's a weight of the world. So. As a leader, you have the weight of your family on you. So you have the responsibilities, all this stuff, right? So there's more to just making money to becoming a leader. That's why I also say that, let's say it's a, it was flipped. The woman being, making the more money. Well, in essence, if she was making the money, she would hope that like, you know, it's just not, you're not showing the power already. That's what I'm saying, right? There's no indicating where, how could you, the money is only the, um, you kicking the door open. What you do once you go through the door, that is the show of leadership. And for your friend, she, yeah, I, I, she may not say it, but her, her experience has shown that the man was low quality in her eyes. Because if he was of higher quality to her, she would still be with him. They, because results matter more than just the words. Right, because if he was a good leader, she would still be with him. Her results show that she picked a terrible man that wasn't, in her eyes, qu qualified to be with her for the rest of her life. So that's why I I go by results, and that showed you by the results where women don't. And that's the problem where we have to. I would say. You have the burn. Women have the burn of performance because they are the ones who will create the family. Because now you have kids in it, you have to pick better. Men, I say it. It's not the biggest thing for men to. I, yeah, men should pick better. But if men picked, let's say, a terrible woman, okay, you know, he didn't force her to have a child. He didn't force her to create a family. So that's the thing. Where at the end of the day. You have to learn a performance. You create this family. Now, if it breaks, you broke it. Because you, one, you chose the man. And two, you created the family. So that's where the burn performance is. And that's why I said she chose a man that is not worthy to lead her. That's the thing. Okay. All right. Um... <laughs> We've talked a lot about about I think what defines a head. Um, as far as I don't know if we want to save it for another show. Talk about what you said about older women and and and. Oh yeah, we definitely. And travel. We had a lot of ideas planning out. Like 
We uh, want to go through single mothers, all. right? Oh which we are kind of, you know, we, which you always we always sprinkle in every episode. But I think it would be a good thing to go full blown the the problems of single mother. Um, yeah, and about you know women, older women, and stuff like that. You know, it's not a good thing because literally. The conversation I had with this woman, right? As a, I, because she's 25, I say, You are wasting your years. You're wasting your youth on a man that is not valuable in your eyes because he's slacking as a leader. And that, that's the thing where we could always do this in another topic too, where women give terrible advice. Women, I believe most conversations women have. You shouldn't listen to. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I personally believe that you should not listen to women talk. I, yeah. don't. I mean, okay, it sounds sexist, right? I, yes, I get yes, that. Yes, it does. It, it got, I get that, but you got to understand that the problem is if women are in their emotions, that's that's the problem. That's when the conversation is illogical, and now it's just you're talking on feels rather than re, you know reality, rather than uh, logic where it makes sense. Because when you're talking on feels, it usually don't make sense, and that's just it. Because women, I'm saying logic <clears throat> will make you think straight, while feelings will blind you. And women just mainly talk on feels. So really, I, uh, women give bad advice. So has it, wait, 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 hold on. Has your mother never given you good advice? No. Get out, Dad. No, my mother. <laughs> advice? No, she hasn't. She hasn't taught you anything that you carry with you. Like you know what? You're right. You mom was right about that. Mama said. And it'd be days like this. It'd be days like this, my mama said. Not really. <laughs> we got to really go into that. All right, we got to. <laughs> okay, okay. Tell me, what, what's the advice your mom gave you that was uh, good? Advice my mom gave me. I mean, my mom, my mom taught me mostly, most of what I know about how to take care of myself. And I mean, okay. I mean, my mom texted me, show me how to take care of myself. Right. Okay. Really well, advice. Yes, she offered you good advice. Like, I, I mean, mean, did you learn how to shop like, from your dad? Did huh? You, did you learn how to shop from your dad? My dad was shitty. Okay. All right. I'm, I'm a, like, I can tell you this. At 39, uh -huh. I'm a result of pretty much a single mom. So, okay. well, you came out okay. She I came out okay. Job. I mean, I mean, came out okay, but I can tell you this. My younger years, I suffered. Right, okay. women make men emotional. Right, <laughs> they turn men, women turn men into females. <laughs> this is it. I think you are lucky that you have your your father to I counteract did, someone. I, like that. I I definitely, and I'm not going to say that I didn't need my father in my life. I did. He was mm -hmm. he was he he meant sons my dad to me so much to me right now. Absolutely, but my mom taught me things like. Just practical things that no, I. I'm not, yeah, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not saying none of that. But I mean, like, advice for the how you know the world works. No, my mom was she. She didn't care about that shit. You know. <laughs> but yeah. Okay. Uh. You know. Cook, clean, or take care of yourself. Okay. What? what okay. That's, that's not. That's not what I'm. That's not what we're talking about. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. No, but I mean. I mean, this is why I say it again, where although I'm not her friend, right? Your friend's friend. Mm -hmm. I would give her better advice. Where okay. well, well, we didn't probably because we're probably running. I don't want my you know my my okay. bro here is going to play D D. So he's yeah. busy. <laughs> he, he's busy with something playing you know, D D with the with the people we uh we saw, uh the head nerd in charge. Yeah, he's gonna be yeah. playing with them. But this is the thing where I think women, and honest, in all honesty, I hear a lot where women rather be friends with men than with other women. Mm. Because this is the thing where I say it. 
and women are blinded to it, especially on the internet, is that men are more blunt and they're better at giving advice. They're more direct, okay. right? So they're not going to hold something back necessarily because they want they, they want you to be better for you. You know, things better for you. So I would have given her, your friend, better advice than she got she, she got from her, you know, female people or whoever, you know? This is the thing where, and at the end of the day, one of the things that women need to do is self-reflection. And your friend needs a lot of that. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think that because maybe that relationship didn't work out, that now she knows better who she wants and her next relationship has a better chance of working out because she no. has a better decision. Statistically, no. I say she's more jaded and more more angry and more aggressive and just more, you know, domineering. I gotta look up these stats you be talking about, Dad. Because I don't I don't know. Because no, it's like okay, these are not direct stats, right? But they are core line. They they core line with um with it's like it's not like A equals B kind of thing. It's like a, but you know what? There's probably B. Because you're doing this. Statistically, they said by Goldman Sachs did a research where by, uh, you know, in about the next five to ten years, more women than ever will be single and childless. So you would think that if the men that they had dealt with in the past had improved their mindset, well, why would in the next couple years more women than ever will be single. No, they would have done actually better than they've done in the past. So you could take a correlation where it's not maybe not necessarily causation, but you could take, you know, a logical assumption that, okay, if this is the results of um, that will could that could happen, well, you got to take the a possible, um, you know, a possible reason is that, well, they actually have not learned from their past actions. So it actually makes things worse for them. That's why I said before, men should, men are fine picking bad women because you men need the trauma. They need to mature and grow so they can learn, right, from men. So they know that, you know what, these are terrible women. I shouldn't deal with them. Women don't need it. They should pick good men to already begin with. And the doing is that they should pick on other qualities besides finance, charm, shit like that. Those are those are um, the player's handbook. They go for the player's handbook, right? While men, they just purely go on beauty. So, I, you know, men, they do to, um, for men going through the uh, trials and tribulations, they can understand that, okay, I shouldn't just pick on beauty. You know, I, I will pick on other other things, but you don't have while men is allowed to fail, it's because they don't necessarily will make they won't burn birth children themselves. Yeah, but that's that's sticky, brother, because I think a lot of men go through a bad experience, and the thing they take away from that bad experience is that all women are like this one woman I was with. But and you gotta think. And then they, they kind of get rotten inside themselves. So, I mean, I don't think trauma is good for anybody. I think no, all people need to take an attitude where, okay, this sucked, but I can, uh, I can learn a lesson and apply it. No, later. you know why? Why I say that, right? It's because yeah. you're right. You're right. It could a trauma could make you terrible, but the difference is, right? Let's say this: a trauma making women terrible, it will. It won't, because the result, let's say this. I'm saying, like, if a man receives trauma, right? Yeah, he could say all women's terrible. But remember, we let's go back to what we're talking about, leadership. If a trauma destroyed him, and then he brought himself back up, right? He built himself up. That What would that do? Create better leadership qualities. Create more qualities for him to be a better leader. Okay. For him to like, maybe if he like a man following, like picking himself back up, uh, focusing on his focusing on himself, like money, you know, um, his looks, his personality, things like that could push him to be better. A man that is now in the like, he's like below dirt and now trying his best to be better 
that will only build a better leader. So that's I the agree point. with you, but you're saying so, that that's not the case with a woman. But a woman, women, women don't need to be a leader. Build themselves women don't need to be, because technically, or I don't know if I say technically, but hopefully naturally that women just be feminine. That's the thing where femininity, right? Be soft. That's the point. I'd rather women, and I can trust you this, I've recently came to the, well, I've, I've come to this realization a while ago, but I mean, with more help, I realize this more and more. Strong, independent women are toxic. They are toxic to the culture, toxic to the world. You just these, I'll let you cook, bro. Go ahead. All right. Yeah, these these strong, independent women are pretty much men in female body. You know, they were they were the. I don't want to say this because I don't want to, anything bad, but they were they are just men in women's body. These because. You have to becoming aggressive, you know, because again, men who are like mass, who who are on the, you know, like they built themselves back up to the ground, they get more masculine, more aggressive, more competitive, you know, they, they are, but they also learn to like, you know what, I don't know, be smarter, be more mature. So it will help them mentally. Masculinity is not a bad thing in men. It's a, it's a, it's a good thing, right? So really men suffering and then becoming stronger because of it is a good thing. Women who suffer and then try to become stronger in it, that's not femininity. That is the result. The result will become masculinity. Again, no disrespect to your friend, but because of the trauma she felt, even in this clip, she's very more, she's much a lot more masculine. Not soft, right? And that's the thing. Whoa. Let's, I, even if we take Say someone else. Let's say I don't even know. We don't even know this woman. If a woman like that, who's like, who's just screaming out, saying all these things, like men this, men that. Oh, you don't not this out of that. Well, that's not yeah. that's not soft in nature. That's aggressive. That's masculine. You know, where you're disagreeable. Being disagreeable is masculine. So, this is the thing yeah. where I say women don't need or yeah. should not suffer the trauma. And that's why I say, if you biblically, it's like they always say, women, uh, uh, mother and father house, and then to the husband house. There's no in between. There's no you know single life. You know, riding the car, right? You know, riding the, you know, having sex with a whole lot of men in between your your family house into your husband house. No, it's straight to your family house into your husband house. Why? Because. Old school tradition, they don't want women to experience the traumas of life. Being with so many men, having bad relationships with men, that will only jade you. Only, which we'll probably talk about more when our older women, I'll, I'll bring some clips in, hopefully you bring some, where those things will only make you more aggressive, make you more masculine, bring you more trauma, Bring you bring walls, more walls in your heart, right? See, it doesn't do good for you. So I think this will be the last I say about it because I, I really think we need to have a show about it and about how yeah. what we think about what's masculine and feminine and and, and how mm -hmm. that works. But like, I think, or right, when you talk about that, like there's all right, there's a worst case and a best case scenario for a man who experiences a trauma that knocks him down. Best case scenario, he builds himself up to become a better man, right? That means he's going to work on himself. Uh -huh. um, he's going to remember what he learned from his experience and make better decisions. He's going to yeah. help others to do the same. Um, I don't think that necessarily means he's going to be more aggressive. I don't know if that if he's more masculine because he's he's tougher toward well, I mean people, but he might be because I think sometimes expressing toughness is actually a sign of weakness. Um, I think I think a masculine man can take one more. I think that that it, he might be better with responsibility. I think that's masculine. But but either way, the best case scenario, he becomes a better man. The worst case scenario is he becomes a toxic man. He's bitter about the, the trauma he went through and blames it on everybody else. Yeah, I think it's the same with a woman. And I think that what happens when we make this argument is if a, we, you're saying all right, if a man experiences trauma, he can build himself back up, best case scenario. But if a woman experiences trauma, this is what happens. And you're only describing the worst case scenario. 
The worst case scenario is the same for a man and a woman. They're still bitter about what happened to them and they act out that way. The best case scenario for a woman who experiences trauma and builds herself back up is she learns to make better decisions. No, because let, let's say this, right? I think that's false. Because you, saying, you don't think that happens. Okay. Again, let's say I say majority of times it doesn't. There's that. also exceptions, but majority of the time, like I said, right? We could we use example of marriage. Well, women they don't make good choices. They don't make good, you know, um, they don't make good decisions if they like are traumatized. And no, let's, let's, I forgot. I'm not going for the marriage part. But let's say because if they're traumatized, they make because it's more emotional. Women are pure emotion. So being emotional already makes you illogical. So they're not thinking straight regardless. Even in a normal state, women don't think straight. So, <laughs> so I don't think that them have, because you got to think a wall for a woman is different for a, a wall from a man. I believe so. So I don't think, and for a woman that made a bad choice in a man, well, I've seen it before where women just continue to make those bad choices, right? Because it doesn't, women just don't improve in that kind of way. And then let's say this, the dip, if a woman made a bad choice, well, they, she also has the risk of your bad choice also made a child, you know? And now you made a child. Now you, now you're, you have the representation of your bad mistake. And now with that state of mind, you also have now you're being a baggage into a relationship. Where the difference with less of with men, they were being stoic, they hold men hold it in. Right? Men, I think being tough is actually a important thing where you hold it in. I'm not saying I I, I said in other um um episodes or other thing where Men, modern, make it make it more modernized where, excuse me, men can hold it in, but modernize it where you process it and make yourself better. That's more modernized. Just don't hold it in until you, you let go of it. Yeah, hold it in. Maybe, maybe don't hold it in. Maybe go to therapy. Yeah, I agree. But I just feel like you're saying that the norm for a man is the best case scenario and the norm for a woman is the worst case scenario. I say the norm for a woman is never good. I'm not saying maybe it's not the worst case scenario, but I say, again, I feel like a woman getting traumatized, it will affect her worse than it will affect a man. In the sense that because of how men are naturally, they're stoic. They hold oh, emotion. But, but we have talked about incel culture right and and yeah but uh, but you gotta think incel culture is that these men are they're they're, they're the worst part right where they're they're at the bottom they're, and they don't pick toxic, themselves up and they're hurting others but then but then the, that's a, but we don't have a not all men is good men no that's exactly and i don't think all women are good women but i don't i don't know that it's it's but that's like, what I'm saying. But like I'm saying, like said, bad twenty percent good for women, and and it's the opposite for men. I don't know if that's. But I'm it. just saying, like, like you gotta think, uh, women. Let's say women being traumatized, mm -hmm. it's not a good thing. Well, no, I don't know that trauma is ever a good thing for anyone. Yeah, but it doesn't improve bad. women. I, I what what you tell me? What example will improve a woman? You are when we say trauma. Right, we're talking about the same traumas for men and women, right? I'm let's not say, okay, yeah. Let's say both of them, like, um, and okay, let's make talk about like a terrible like, relationship. A man and a woman are in a bad relationship, yeah. Okay, and you're saying that a woman comes out of a bad relationship, and most likely she's going to become a worse woman because of that bad relationship, yeah. But a man what? is most likely be going to become a better man because of that relationship. No, 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 I didn't say that. I that's, say most likely. Like. that's what I'm saying. Okay. Like I'm not saying that he'll most likely become a better man. I'm saying that for men having trauma, because, like, again, like I said, if he picks himself up, it will improve him drastically. So let's say, let's you said the incel community. 
if these low bottom of the barrel men will pick themselves up to be the best they can be, they will have that reflection, right? Where they were at the lowest and now they physically, mentally made themselves better. So let's say an insult man became a high value six figure man. That man will be so much more mentally, physically superior, better, and have the qualities where, you know what? I would follow this man because he's shown that I can pick myself up from dirt and become this top percent man, right? That shows you that, wow, this man is amazing. I don't think that will happen. I'm saying that, but that given that process shows you that this man is a strong man. He's an amazing man. He's a top percent man because he picked himself from the lowest of low to become the highest of highs. That's why I said, I'm not saying most men would because sadly, most men don't, right? I, I say that most men don't pick them, pick them themselves up from the lowest of lows and become better. But if it happens for a man, it is exponentially better for him because he will become something that he should be a good leader, a good man. So that's why I said for man, trauma or, you know, having going through experience, things I guess, is yeah. better, okay. right? It's better for a man. Now, maybe what you're not thinking that for a woman, let's say she's going for the lowest lows. How she, we don't need a woman to be, that's the thing where, well, I say men, women want a man. That's a, that's an amazing leader. They should. Right, a man that's proven himself to be a great man. Women want that. So the opposite, right? A woman that's what we said. A man cheated on her, broke her heart, shit like that. Her becoming what? I mean, men don't need her to become nothing, right? Men want her soft. So let's say this. Now she's she's grizzled. She's like she's she's aggressive. Now let's say if exact same situation where now. That man became a leader. Became a, why would I want a woman to become a leader who makes now like have these qualities of her picking herself up, you know, becoming, you know, I know what I want. I'm a strong, independent woman. I'm I'm the leader of the household. I'm like this and that. That that doesn't. I'd rather her in the middle where she never even fell down, where she's still soft, more innocent, more less jaded by the world. But then you want That's a baby. Most men like want. We, all, we all live. And as we live, bad things happen to us that we got to pick ourselves up from. Yeah, but it's true. But this, up, you know, right? as, yeah, you, but you got to think, right? The difference is that if, even let's go back to biblically, men marry women earlier. They, like I said, household to the husband's house. That's how it worked. Biblically, women don't go the in-between. Like they do nowadays, right? But that that shows you why. I'm, I'm not saying that it's life. I, I agree. That's how life is. Mm -hmm. But there's a reason for old traditions. There was a reason because even men know that, I mean, men know it, that if a woman experienced life, it's not necessarily a good thing for a woman. So that's why they rather house, parents' house, husband house. Because you go in between, that could ruin your step to becoming, to to going into a husband house, because then you're now you're in your own house, you know. That's the thing where where you I think you're missing the point where, again, what women want and what men want are two different things, right? Women want the grizzled or the you know the man that picks himself up, becoming a high value man, be, be, becoming a better man. Women are naturally already valuable, how they are. They're naturally, women have natural value. When they're born, they have natural value. So the innocence, the purity, the um, the gentleness, you know, all um, the gentleness, the femininity, that's what general men and most most men want is that. I, most men don't want her to experience dozens of heartbreaks, well, to be cheated on, to be yeah. like, you know, going through trauma. Most men don't. So really... Yeah. Men rather her not experience life without them. I I I think that I think I think 
our disconnect is how we define picking yourself up. Um, I think, uh, I think, I, I think a man who's gone through some tough times and picked themselves up and they've become a six figure man. Well, good for them, but they're a crappy six figure man. They, they, they exist. Right. So how much money he makes isn't, I'm not, I'm not just saying the money part. I'm saying, I'm saying the pill package. I'm saying right. the whole package. But 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 then you don't apply that to the woman. Then you say, but the but woman she, she picks herself up. She's automatically going to become this, you know, you know, uh, toxic, jaded person. Okay, you know, you tell me, right? Okay, yeah, give me how, all the time. But how about tell me, okay? Her picking herself up. What would her make her better in a man's eyes? What what her picking up? Because I can tell you this: a man that picks himself up shows determination, which is, um, you know, a good thing. If he, be, if he becomes a valuable man, you know, that's a good thing, right? Uh, it shows him maybe, you know, if he becomes now a leader of men, that's also a good – I mean, there, there's qualities, right? When a man picks himself up and become the best version of himself, there's qualities he will gain, right? Qualities he will gain that makes him attractive to women. So you tell me what you think that, let's say, a woman that's – Rock bottom, picks herself up. What qualities does she now gains that will make her attractive to men? So say she's been in a bad relationship. She picked the wrong guy. He didn't yeah. pick right, right? Um, she's not gonna pick that kind of guy again. So when I when I when I meet her, so hold on. So when I meet her, she's learned she's learned not to value just good looks and charm over somebody who who is actually kind or and makes smart decisions. She's learned that a real leader isn't just someone who isn't just a bad boy, but maybe it's someone who is compassionate, right? Maybe she's learned determination, right? Because she had to, her, maybe her finances are, are a wreck. Maybe, oh my God, maybe she's had a child she's had to take care of now. Now, if she, but, if, but if she picked herself up, she's learned, okay, I made some mistakes. I was with an irresponsible person who didn't treat me right. So now I'm going to look for somebody who's responsible and will treat me right. I'm going to look for somebody who who's more like uh, who's more like Dan, who's who's right, right, who's 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 kind, who's going to who's going to to put work into a relationship to take care of his family instead of somebody who's fun to be around but not responsible. Um, and 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 selfish, right? So a woman who's picked herself up can learn the same lessons, right? No, no, see, okay. Let, a better woman. I just don't see why that can't happen. Okay. Let, it doesn't happen a lot for a lot of people, man or woman. No, no, no. But I don't see, see why it can't happen. So what I, what you're disconnected is that, right? I said for a man to pick himself up, he will gain, he will gain attributes that will make him attractive to a woman. So one thing, a woman having a child will never make a man will, will never a, be attractive thing for another man. Mm. That's one mistake already. So really, that would just that that just that just strike your conversation a little bit, right? Maybe you're a man who wants a family, and you're a baby. you will create your own family. No man, I mean, not saying no man, but like majority of men do not want blended family, right? Majority of men they don't. They rather create their own family. So really, that doesn't make a woman attractive to most men. So really, that part is already off. You're a <clears throat> and, man, you want to create your own family? Yes. I would rather create my own family. I mean, no. If given a choice, I'm not saying that, okay, I've, I've dated single mothers, right? Mm -hmm. Given a choice, let's say a woman that has kids, ex two exactly same women. Two exactly same women. Woman that has kids. Her twin sister has no kids. Well, I'm going for her twin sister that doesn't have kids. <laughs> so I can invest my money into my kids that I make with her. Period. Okay. No man would choose the would given option would choose the one with, with, with kids. There's no such thing. But if hmm. but I'm just that, I mean that might be we we we're going on, on a lot of topics. If yeah, I'm yeah. if I'm an older man, I don't know if I'm if I want to start. Well, I mean, okay, depends. I mean, like you're 65, whatever. Well, if you're 45, by the time your 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 child is 18, you'll be about 60. 
Yeah, but right? most men, I mean, like you think most men doesn't like they they're not they're not nurturers, right? Like that women. They don't need to be highly involved in their children's everyday life. But they do need to be involved in it. No, 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 no. I didn't say they I said highly. They don't need to be in every little thing. I say I do believe fathers should be involved in the children's life, but you being men being older doesn't necessarily mean that like okay, who, okay, they, have, they men still have kids. See, you gotta think men can still have kids until they're old age, until well, they're very old age. Well, so well, there is like well, logic well, why well, they could do that. But are we gonna have the energy to take care of them? I mean, even it just we don't need to. Men don't need to. You do. That's why you have women. Hold on, hold on. Because if you're if you're gonna if you're the primary provider. You need to have energy, right? You need to have the energy to go to work every day, and then you need to have the energy to come home and be present for your family. If you're but you, no, but you don't. There's level to it, right? If I have the, if I, if I'm primary provider, well, my my primary energy is going to providing. The little bit of energy I have, yeah, it's for my kids, but my primary energy is to provide. What if your wife is staying home? Her primary energy is the kids. And you, so that's that's the thing we're, we're forgetting partnership. That's the partnership right there. It's not necessarily 50 50, but sh that's her part where she take care of the household, the family, the you know, the children, and the husband. That's her thing where she nurtures the children, and men also, you know, put in some effort. You know, they guide their children, they discipline their children, they teach their children, they're putting effort too, but the main burner performance is on women they are the ones who you know nurture the children mainly okay that's it okay I, I, but, I, i'm gonna save my other thoughts for later right yeah okay but i'm also okay but to go back what i'm saying is that i think you're you're faulty in that women should already know i don't want a cheater i don't want a man that's that's just purely charming i want a man that's morals that that's have characters on this stuff right that's the thing where, you know, both men and women should already know. But the, pro the the difference is that with men, it's fine that they don't know that. Or it's fine that, you know, they don't care about that. Because, like I said. I mean, it's fine for them because what they do will just hurt the woman. It won't hurt the man. That's what you're saying. What? You're saying it's fine for the man because it's not going to hurt the man like it's going to hurt the woman. Well, I mean, it doesn't. Uh, uh, again. Like I said, it won't hurt a woman's, I don't know, future as it would for a man necessarily. Because, like I said, it's better for a man to experience trauma and lift himself up to to become the best version of himself. While women should already be, they once, like I said, when you're in your parents' house, you should already be the best version of yourself. Right? I think you should already, because there's nothing else a man needs a woman to gain. You wanted a man with more. I mean, like, it's funny that you were saying, like, okay, I, I said, do you need to know, do you need to be cheated on to know that you shouldn't be cheated on? No. You should already know that before you got into a relationship. Do you need to know that you shouldn't get with an abusive man before you've been with an abusive man? You don't need to know that. No, but but the way we, men and women make the same kind of mistake. You don't want to get cheated on. But you don't necessarily know how to recognize a cheater sometimes until you've been with one. I'm not saying well, you have to be with one, but I think it's if if you're a man and you go to a relationship and your woman cheats on you, right? It ain't hurt. You recognize the signs and and other women, and you'd be like, I'm not gonna pick a woman like that because the last woman I was with who was like that cheated on me, and she did this, this, and this before she did it, right? So now you know if a a woman, of course, she knows she doesn't want to be cheated on. But if she gets with a man and he cheats on her, it hurts. And now she recognizes the signs in that man of a cheater. No, look, because why there's does, different. Because why, she, why does she know that automatically? But we we are allowed to go figure it out. Because let me tell you this. Why? Because you are ignoring the fact, the you know, the natural characteristics of people. If I'm dating a man... If I was a woman dating a man that's like charming, that's good looking, that's six foot tall, he has he knows a whole bunch of women. Well, I should know that this man, there's a high percent chance that he's a cheater. So and but the, the difference is, let's say this: if a man 
gets with a woman that's a librarian, how is he going to know he's going to be cheap? There's characteristics that with the that, that's naturally, right, for certain men. There's not many women that are charismatic or that, that show signs of she's a natural cheater. There's not. But men, there are. Let's say this. If I'm gonna, if I'm a woman dating a football player, I'm stupid. There's a ninety percent chance he's gonna be cheating. What? Are you? I mean, come on. You, what? you, would you think otherwise? Yeah, don't mean, don't I'm give me that. Shit. See how it's not the same the other way. That's what because I'm we are different people. You agree, men and women are different, right? Yes. Oh well, then there's different things. There's just difference, right? Why why do we always say that there are players, there are bad boys when it comes to men? Because those are archetypes. Those are archetypes. Those type of men, you can name them. You can see those type of men. A man that's charming, he's good looking, he, he talks to women easily. Well, I will give you a 60 to maybe 80% chance that he's dealing with a lot of women. I can see that. What's an archetype for women? You have the girl next door. That's practically it. You don't have the popular girl in school. You don't have the, the, the popular girl. Okay, that's who, great. Who dates, who dates jocks? Who everybody but, likes? But see, that's what I'm saying. If a man dating the popular girl in school, well, he should also know that she's she has the symbol of cheating. How does a teenager find that out? Because if she's the popular girl in school, then you're blind. You can figure that out, but but if but you don't know that that means she's he's. The 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 seven the sixteen year old kid has a question. Okay, her. but I'm but the problem right now is by getting into a relationship with her and then getting hurt, right? But you but like I said, you don't understand that there's still the difference. Where let's say even if he knew that she would cheat, or if he didn't, right? He dated the popular woman, the popular girl in school. If he she cheated on him and he's destroyed, well, there's a if he like I said, him building himself up is the point, is the key. He was at his lowest and brought himself back up. He will gain qualities that will make him a better man. And not 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 qualities just because, oh, he now he knows who's cheaters. You should have known. It's just you're, you're less stupid, right? Now you're less stupid. Men being smarter, logical, that's part of the qualities he'll gain. Women, you, you don't necessarily need a woman to be more logical to pick guys who do not cheat because – you should have already known. You don't need to do it. Women do not gain any kind of qualities from dealing with bad men that will be beneficial to the next bad to the next good man that she might possibly deal with. They actually can gain bad qualities. Like I said, a child, that's a that's something bad for a subsequent man. I'm not saying having a child is bad. I'm just saying that's not a good thing for the next man. So I know you, you you're so you're so I don't know, man, I just, <laughs> we're not seeing eye on this one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm mean, what I do you guys think? I, mean, I, I don't know. know. It's, it's, but I know you gotta go soon. So we we will delve deeper into this because I think if it's not the next episode, it'll probably be the, the one afterwards where we'll talk about single mothers. Because yeah. I think that's I said it before. You know, single mothers are poison to community or <laughs> lack thereof. So I am okay. I mean, I hope that you, I mean, you maybe you could think more about what you're t- talking about and help you qualify because I personally think, like I said, women do not gain any good quality that men would want when they become, when they be, get trauma. That's the point where it's the, it's the point where what quality. She should gain. Well, you should have already known what type of men not to choose before you, you know. Before you had to choose a man, like you should just naturally know. You should naturally know you don't want a cheater. It's the same from it's the same both ways. But, but yes, men should naturally know. But I said the problem, the 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 benefit is that he picking himself back up is the key. You got you, men should already know. That's correct. But the thing is that him picking himself back up. The qualities he will gain on that trip, on that road to being a better man, is valuable to women. For women, you gain no qualities that will make you valuable to men. This is it. I agree with that. Okay, but I, I I don't think I agree. But okay. 
Okay, you know, then we could, uh, if we're talking, we could we could continue that, and I think, you know, we could really do d- dive deep into it because, like I said, I said what I said. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Ten toes down, baby. <laughs> but I, I think it was fun, fun, uh, fun conversation. Um, yeah, man. Yeah. So, what's what what? I'll give you the last thoughts. Just okay. so, any quick thoughts you have. Um. I mean, if, if we're just restating what, you know, is it, it's, it's worth talking about. I personally think, let's just go back to the very first clip. Gabrielle Union talking about um, splitting things 50-50 with Frosman. And, and that got people up in a, in a tizzy about, you know, what their finances were and, and, and how they handled that. And I didn't know much about her past relationships or anything like that. But I personal, personally believe that a relationship should be as close to 50-50 as you can get it. And that doesn't mean splitting finances in half. I just think that there are a lot of aspects to a relationship. And whether it's you handling all the finances and she handling a number of other things, I think relationships fail when it doesn't feel like it's really 50-50, like you're both not in it. I can agree with that. I can agree with that. Yeah, I, I mean, it. yeah, I can agree with that. All right, we have fun, uh, good conversation. Definitely, I I'm looking forward to the next uh, episode. So I, I hope you guys are. I see. <laughs> uh, uh, wish this guy good luck in his D and D battle. Yes, yes, Lennox Dead Eye Duffy. I'm gonna go. Um, we be getting flamed every week. So <laughs> All right, that'll be fun. fun. I love it. All right, All I'll right. talk to y'all. Take care. Later, guys. <laughs>